the old war had ended. And with it, the Orican fell to the dust they had trounced on for centuries past. Above their temporary corpses stood legions of monsters by their own design. These metal golems, twisted by devil minds, the Warframes, were one such legion. Primed for rending kingdoms asunder, Rhino was one of the first. Armed to the horns with the power to impact the origin system itself, Tenno, using Rhino Prime, retook their home worlds with terrible efficiency, and according to the eyewitnesses whom happened to not get on Rhino's bad side, the Tenno did so without suffering so much as one bullet wound. How did they do it? My name is Arcator, and today I'm putting that question to rest. I'm going to show off the titular Rhino Prime build, along with some complimentary information, such as recommended weapons and helmet abilities, so that you too can rip those who stand against you asunder with the ease of an artisan in his craft. The footage you're watching now is a Steel Path Kuva Fortress Extermination. With my Rhino Prime, I'm using a Mazalon, a Reaper Prime, a Kuva Nucor, and a Cedo. You'd be correct in thinking that these weapons are surely overkill, and any Warframe can use them to their fullest potential, even in the Steel Path, but that is precisely where Rhino thrives. Let's take a look at the build. Firstly, I'd like to make a note of how expensive this build is, but rest assured, if you've got the basic must-haves in here, your Rhino will still be able to battle with the best of them. Firstly, I've got Arcane Energize. Rhino Prime is a little energy hungry, and blood won't be enough to feed him this time. I also have Arcane Tanker, part of Rhino's main rotation. This will help him really scale up into the Steel Path, and far, far beyond. As you can see, I've got six Forma on my Rhino, including one Umbra Forma. Rest assured, this amount of work is not necessary. I've just experimented with this Warframe a hell of a lot, and this is possibly the most versatile build you can make. As I always say, corrosive projection never hurt anybody, except the Grenier, and cunning drift is a luxury you'll never have to afford, trust me. I have Umbral Fiber for Iron Skin's durability, but just know that normal Steel Fiber is fine too. Iron Shrapnel to refresh my two when needed, Primed Continuity to keep my team's damage going, Stretch to charge through as many poor souls as possible, Transient to bolster my roar, and Flow to fuel my rampage. Normal Intensify will work fine, but the coup de grace of this build lies in Ironclad Charge. This augment allows me to multiply my Iron Skin's durability exponentially. Along with Larva over Rhino Stomp to help group enemies together, you'll consistently see numbers in the hundreds of thousands. Here's a quick bonus look at my personal Eidolon build, and a build I use for the Index as well. Your game plan as Rhino is to dish out as much damage as you can take, and thanks to this built Roar having a 103% damage multiplier for over 30 seconds, you'll be shredding anything to bits, no matter what level they are. As soon as you enter a mission, you'll want to fill up your energy as much as you can, whether through Xenoric, Pizza, or a friendly Protea. You should always have a reliable source of energy to begin with. Cast an Iron Skin normally, you'll find that the initial 5 to 10k health isn't much in a higher level mission, but you only need to handle one or two shots while you cast Larva on the first few enemies unlucky enough to enter your site. Rhino charge right through them, and you'll see a multiplier up on the top right. Depending on how high level the mission is, anything from 400 to 2000% will do just fine. After this number appears, you can choose to boost your armor even further by utilizing Arcane Tanker and calling down whatever art gun you have equipped. During the long animation, you can potentially press 2 to pop your iron skin on any enemies who are getting too close for comfort. 
It won't do much damage yet, but it will knock them down long enough for you to cast another Iron Skin. This time, using all those sweet buffs to get numbers as high as 200,000, depending on how many enemies you can fit in the larva. Once you've obtained Godhood, you can either mow down the entire mission with your arc gun, or put it away, and use Rhino's Roar to easily double all of your damage. In the time it takes for you to build up some more energy, the buff will still be active. If somehow your Iron Skin begins to take significant amounts of damage, you can start the whole rotation again in the same way to keep the fight going. This is the true power of Rhino Prime. Here's how I've got my fashion set up if you'd want to take a look and feel like the true god of Warframes. Here's a quick look at the builds for my melee weapon and arc gun used in this video. Thanks for watching. Rhino Prime is absolutely one of the best Warframes in the game, surely for the fact that he is never the wrong choice for a mission. If you like my build or just my fashion frame, go ahead and let me know by hitting the like button below. If you want some more powerful Warframe builds, and also whatever else I upload, you can subscribe as well, and make sure you ring the bell. See you out on the star chart, Tenno.